Hi there and welcome once again. This is Jennifer McGuire and I appreciate you visiting. So I decided since many of us are stuck at home right now and trying to find a little bit of joy, I thought I would do a longer video in case anybody wanted something to watch. So I have a long video today for you and I talk about ways to do stamping on dark or bold colors of cardstock. I really like the dramatic look of this and it works especially well if you have stamp layering sets or when you overlap individual stamps. So I bet you have something in your stash that would work for this technique and I have lots of examples for you today. Before I get into this, I wanted to mention that I think it's a really important time for all of us to give cards to others. I think everybody could use a little encouragement now, especially nurses and doctors and grocery store workers and many others. So I presented a challenge over on Instagram, very simple challenge called uh, card making is my superpower. And basically I'm suggesting that all of us card makers use our superpower of creating and giving kindness to get us through this tough time. So I will put a link below to that Instagram post, very um, low key little challenge here that will get us through this time. And all of the cards today I made with somebody in mind for this challenge. So I'll provide that link below. So if you can please join me in this challenge, I can't think of a better time to tap into the joy of creating and the kindness of sharing handmade cards. So let's get into today's video and I hope it provides a bit of an escape for you. We're going to start with the example that you see here where I do layering of ink on a dark cardstock and the results are really beautiful. Okay, so I'll be using this Altenew Fabulous Florets stamp set. I really like the look of this. I like flowers that have large petals like this and you can use the outlines alone or the very easy to line up layers on top of each other which I'll do today. Now I did want to show you that Altenew also comes with a little uh, pamphlet with their stamps and check it out. It has these card ideas that you can use as guides, which I'll show you a little bit later in this video, and also get some ideas for different designs that you can do with the particular stamps. It also includes a layering guide that makes it very easy to use. So I'm using my new Hero Arts Black Misty stamping tool. I love the clean look of this new Misty. And I am starting with the solid layer of the flower. I'm stamping this onto a piece of navy cardstock and I will link to the cardstocks I used in my description below. The first layer I'm going to stamp with a nice white pigment ink. There are many white pigment inks on the market and I prefer the Hero Arts Unicorn White. You'll see that it turns into like a light blue on this super dark cardstock, which is gorgeous. Now I'm coming in with the second layer. This time I'm going to stamp with Altenew Crisp Dye Ink. Any dye ink would work here and I try to go with an ink color that kind of matches the cardstock that I'm using. And I'll put the colors of the particular ink that I'm using up in the top corner of the screen. I want to heat emboss the outline of this image. So I heat set what I have here because remember this is a pigment ink so it's wet for a bit. So I heat set it. Now I'm using an anti-static powder bag. And then I'm just going to pour some embossing powder over it to make sure nothing's sticking. That's a good test. None of it's sticking, so I can go ahead and do my heat embossing. So I'll put this back into my Misty, and I'm pretty generous with my anti-static powder here because I want to make sure that we don't get any powder where we don't want it. After I line up the outline image, I'll stamp that with Versamark ink and then heat emboss with silver embossing powder. You could do white embossing powder, pearl embossing powder, dark blue embossing powder, whatever you want, but I thought the silver would be nice. Okay, so now that I've done one flower here, I'm going to add a sentiment. I'm using the new Altenew Sweet Nothing stamp set. The sentiment I'm using is on the bottom of the screen there. It got cut off, so I'm going to show you the set here. It's that Hello Sweetie on the bottom left, and I actually cut off the word sweetie, so I just had hello. So I'm going to use my Simon Says Stamp Grid Transparency here. This is very helpful when getting a sentiment in the perfect spot and making sure it's straight. So you put it over your paper, you line up the stamp, close the door on the Misty, and then remove the transparency grid. I'm now going to stamp hello with Versamark ink and then white heat emboss this time. I thought the white embossing on this would stand out against everything else we put on the card. Next, I thought it would be fun to pop up this flower in a strip of cardstock around it. You see that vertical strip there? Let me show you how I did that. 
I'm using my Fiskars trimmer and I'm dropping the blade and cutting right up to the flower but not through the flower. You can also do this with a straight edge and craft knife if you don't have a trimmer like this. But I just go right up to the edge of the flower, then I lift the blade, and then I go below the flower, drop the blade again, and go to the edge of the paper. So I'm cutting right around the flower on both sides. Now I definitely could have just cut out the flower and glued it on to the sentiment strip, but I feel like this gives a fun continuous look. It doesn't take that long and actually you end up cutting out less of the flower this way. Okay, so now it's time to cut out the flower that's hanging off of the strip line. So anything outside of those cut lines, I'm going to cut along the flower. So you see I'll cut right along the edge here, right up to the cut line. Now I could create a simple card design using this, and I'll show you an example of that a little bit later, but I decided to add some more stamping behind this. So there's some flowers and leaves peeking out from it. So I have my strip cut here, and I have another piece of navy cardstock that's cut to four and quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to use my strip to kind of plan where I stamp the flowers and the leaves in the background. By the way, you could use a different color of cardstock here if you wanted to. Okay, so now I'm going to position this flower in the background, just using that strip to kind of eyeball where I want that flower to peek out. Then I'll close the door on my Misty and I can start doing the same stamping again. So once again, I'll start with the white pigment ink, then I will stamp with a blue dye ink on top. So what happens here is the pigment ink stays kind of on top of the paper. It stays wet for a little bit. But then when we stamp the blue ink on it, it allows that blue ink to kind of sit on top of the pigment ink. Normally, if you stamp a blue dye ink onto a dark cardstock, it kind of disappears or just makes the cardstock darker, but you kind of lose the color. By stamping with the white pigment ink first, you can keep the color intact. So in this case, I can see that blue ink on the white stamping. And it's a beautiful way to do stamp layering. I've done some techniques similar to this in the past in other videos, and I will link to that at the end of this video if you want to check it out. This is a great way to do layering or overlap stamping with basic inks. So a white pigment ink is an ink that I think most of us should have in our crafty stash. There's so many ways to use it. And then you just a basic color dye ink you can stamp on top of the white and then embossing over that. You can also add in some silver stamping or different shades of blue stamping on top of the white. Really, you can stretch your layering stamps by using the basic inks you have. Okay, so now I'm going to mat the little strip that we made on a piece of white cardstock so that this will stand out on our background. I also trimmed down our background piece to four by five and a quarter and added it to a top folding white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now instead of using foam tape, which I'm trying to use less of, I just have some white cardstock scraps where I either stamped on it and didn't like the stamping or it got wet and it just doesn't look nice. I save that white cardstock and I build a few layers of that white cardstock behind anything I want to build up. So I have four layers of scrap white cardstock on the back of this. So that allows it to pop up. And that way I can avoid using the foam tape and I can use up my scraps. I wanted to add a little bit of white pop in the center of the flowers. There are stamps that line up for the center of the flowers, but I thought the white gel pen would be fun. I also added some little silver baubles along it. You could use gems, pearls, sequins, whatever you have. And there you can see the final result. I like how the white pigment ink makes the ink very soft looking on the dark background. If I would have used a light blue uh, dye ink on that dark cardstock, it wouldn't have shown up. So by doing the white pigment ink, it really pops. So I kind of went in my overboard mode here. I wanted to make a lot of cards to give out as for the reasons I mentioned before. And I really like the stamp set and look. So I thought I'd just make a bunch of cards on different color card stocks, different combinations to show you the many different ways you can do this technique. So on my blue card, I used blue ink because I had a blue background. On this one, I decided to do a plum colored background and I stamped with the white pigment ink, which looks like that soft pink. 
And then I stamped with a bold purple ink for the layering. And so it just adds a little bit more interest. I also put my flowers towards the bottom of the card, but I really followed the same technique as before. Now here's the next example where I use two different colors of cardstock and two different colors of ink. Now notice the flowers. On that blue strip, I stamped with the white pigment ink and then a dark green ink over it. On the green panel in the background, I did the white pigment ink with blue ink over it. And notice how the white pigment ink looks different on the green cardstock and on the blue cardstock. That's one of the great things about a white pigment ink is that you can get those different looks. It's one of those universal ink pads. And then you can use your beautiful colors of say Altenew crisp dye ink on top of that. And you can see how the colors pop. For this example, I decided to step up the background a little bit. So I did the same process that I've done already, white pigment ink and then pink ink on top of that. But then here on the background, I stamped a dot background stamp, the dainty Swiss dots from Altenew. I stamped that with a pink ink. And I did that over my stamping. So you can see how the dots show up on my flowers and in the background. So don't be afraid to stamp over your stamping with a background stamp. By the way, that sentiment is from this Altenew Simply the Best stamp set. I really like the sentiments in this one, and I thought this one would be perfect to give to a nurse. I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of shimmer to this design. So for this one, I stamped with white pigment ink on a dark green cardstock. Then for the layer, I stamped with a yellow dye ink, and then I stamped it again with Altenew Enchanted Gold ink. This is a shimmery gold ink and you can see how it shimmers on the layering on those flowers. Next, I stamped over the background with that dot Altenew stamp set that I used on my last example. And I stamped that with the gold ink also. So it gives a little bit of shimmer to the background. Another way to add shimmer to your layered stamping is with Perfect Pearls. I know many of us have these from back in the day and they're still a great product. Little goes a long way. So I stamped the first layer with white pigment ink and then I'm tapping on some Perfect Pearl. This is a pigment powder. I'll knock off the excess, heat set it, and then once I've heat set it, I'll gently wipe away the excess with a dry cloth. So now this layer has some shimmer to it. Then you just continue to do the rest of the project as I did earlier. I'm stamping with a dye ink right on top of it. Look how it stands out and shines. Now this card example on the left doesn't have perfect pearls. It's the one I made earlier. This one on the right does, and you can see that shimmer. So here's a card I made with the stamp layering that I did with the perfect pearls. I did the flower on the panel just like before, and then I added some green leaves that I did stamp layering with the Perfect Pearls also. And on the background, I just stamped on navy cardstock with a dark blue ink using that dot background stamp. Okay, I also wanted to show you that you could use stamp layering that you did on dark cardstock and then cut it out and add it onto a softer background. So in this case, I created my flowers as I've done before. I stamped with white pigment ink on a dark purple cardstock. Then I stamped with dark purple dye ink on top for the layering. Then I cut those out and I put them on a lighter background. I also did the same for the leaves on a dark green cardstock. Now behind my little cluster of cut out flowers and leaves, I have an Altenew Window Sphere die die cut. I really liked the design of this. I thought it was a perfect backdrop for a cluster of stamped images. I put this on a light purple note card and then I silver heat embossed Thinking of You from the Altenew Dainty Swiss Dot stamp set. That's that dot background stamp that I used a few times earlier. This is one of my most used stamp sets of all time in my craft room. Okay, now that we've created enough of those flower cards, let's create something completely different. And I am crazy about the look that you can get with layering these images. And I'll be making a lot more with Lila later on today. So this is the Altenew Spheres and Spirals stamp set. And it totally reminds me of my childhood. But what's nice is you can easily stamp these together in different ways to create a really bold and fun background. Well, I decided to use these along with the stamp layering on dark cardstock technique, and it really worked out well. There is a coordinating die set. I'll be using that die on the left today, but you could definitely do a one layer card with this stamp set very easily. 
There are many different ways you can arrange these large circle images. I'm going to start with the center first, stamp that with Versamark ink, and then silver heat emboss it. I then will move to the larger outer circle and try to line it up as best as I can. I'm just eyeballing it and it seemed to work out okay. This time I will stamp with white pigment ink. So once again, I'm going to some basic inks, the white pigment ink, the heat embossing, and then just one bold color. So if you don't have a lot of bold uh, dye ink colors, this is a great trick. Just mix it along with any embossing powders you may have and white pigment ink. And by the way, what I'm not showing here is that I'm stamping this on multiple pieces of cardstock, so I'll end up with lots of cards. Okay, now for this circle here, I wanted to use a dark ink that matched our background. This will stamp over that white pigment ink, and when you stamp with dye ink over the pigment ink, you get really cool looks. So it almost looks like you did more stamping than you really did. Now I'm gonna double stamp that just to make sure, and then I'm going to wipe the ink away that overlapped with the embossing powder in the center. Whenever you stamp dye ink on top of embossing powder, you wanna wipe it away so it doesn't smear later on. There you can see the cool effects you get by overlapping those. And again, I'm making multiples of these at once. You could definitely leave this as a one layer card. It's perfect for that, but I thought I'd add some dimension to it and it ends up giving a really cool effect. So I die cut the uh, little sun-like image here from the die I showed you earlier. I'm using the negative space to line up with the pattern in our background. So I'm going to line it up with this, but here's a little trick I wanted to show you. When you do this, go ahead and tear a little bit off the edge of your negative space, like I did up there, you'll see why. Now I'm going to line this up with our stamping. This lines up with the dark blue stamping that we did. Sorry my head gets in the way, but this is the best way to make sure I get it lined up. Once I have it lined up, I'll take the die and pop it into the negative space. I will then hold it there as I take the negative space away. And because I put that tear in the top, it comes off easily. So watch, I'm holding the die in place and then I'll take the negative space away. Again, that tear makes it come off easily. Now I'm going to use a little bit of tape to make sure this doesn't shift. And then I'm going to run it through my die cut machine. This allows me to make sure that I die cut along with the pattern that we stamped and check out this cool piece that we end up with. We also end up with that small center piece that we can use for something else. And by the way, wouldn't that die be perfect for creating a giant sun on a card? I'm gonna have to try that one later. Okay, I also die cut more of that same die from white cardstock. I actually die cut four of them. And then I glued them to the back of this blue one. So what I have is four stacked white die cuts glued to the back of the blue one so that it would have dimension to it. Here I have a white note card that I'm going to cover pretty generously with adhesive. I will then lay our negative space right onto this and then lay our layered die cut right into the opening. You can see the white pigment ink on the outside of that circle there and this will pop right into place. And I love how the white peeks out the edge of that layered die cut. For the sentiment in the center, I'm going to do a bit of layering. First, I'm taking that extra blue piece that we had left over from before, and I'm actually going to use the back of it because I didn't want it to go to waste. On that, I'm stamping another image from the same stamp set with the Galactic Stream ink, the same blue that I used before. And then we'll put that right into the center. It just pops right in place. I then will use a tool to just kind of press it down and make sure that it's flat against the note card. Okay, for the sentiment, I wanted it to stand out. So I die cut a few blue circles and I white heat embossed hello on the circle. Now you'll see I have multiples, that's because I messed a couple up. Those are gonna get glued to the back for layering instead of letting them go to waste. Then over there on the left, you see I have a silver circle. That was just a white die cut circle and I covered it with two layers of silver embossing powder. So now I have a silver circle that will be a mat for this die cut here. So that blue circle is a little bit smaller than the silver. I then can glue that in the center of our card. I decided to add a little bit of detail using an old silver gel pen and I just put little dots along the pattern. So you could make a bunch of these cards in different colors. 
And the fun of this is we use dark cardstock with some basic stamp layering, overlapping of inks. So we overlap the white and the blue and the silver embossing powder. And I also did some die cut layering to really pop it and bring it alive even more. My favorite part of this card is that white layered die cut behind the blue one that you can kind of see when you tilt the card. It just adds to the effect. By the way, that Hello Sentiment is from that same dot background stamp that I showed you earlier. Okay, next I wanted to show you how you could do stamp layering on a dark cardstock, even if you ha don't have a stamp set that involves layering. For this one, you just need any stamp set that has any kind of solid image. This is the Altenew Line Art stamp set. I like the unique look of these flowers. And again, this is not a layering set, but I'm gonna show you how to get a cool layering effect with it. I also have a fun trick for you if you're using an Altenew stamp set. So this is one of the things I like about Altenew stamps is that they come with these little brochures with the stamp, and those are full-size card panels there. I mean, the images are full-size, true to size of the stamp set. So what you can do is cut them out and use them as a guide for your stamping. So here I'm going to use this one. I like the arrangement of those flowers. So I'm just cutting along the dotted lines and then I can use that as a guide in my MISTI, which I think is one of the coolest things. Sometimes I struggle with getting the perfect alignment of flowers and this saves me a lot of time. Okay, so I've put this into my MISTI and watch this. I'm going to line up one of the stamped images with the guide. Perfect size. And I'll actually do two at once. So then I can close the door on my MISTI and then start doing my stamp layering on my cardstock. So I'm doing the first layer once again with the white pigment ink. And I thought it'd be fun if I stamped it once, rotated my paper and stamped again. That way I can cover my cardstock background quicker. Now while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same on a dark pink cardstock and also on a dark purple cardstock. The fun thing about these layering techniques with white pigment ink and a colored dye ink is you get different looks on different colors of cardstock and you get different looks depending on what color ink you put on top of the white pigment ink. Okay, next it's time to do our second layer. We're gonna use the exact same stamp so they're still in my MISTI. I'm just going to take my paper and put it in the MISTI, but notice I shifted it up a tiny little bit. There's a little gap down there. I mean, we're talking a tiny little bit. You could offset more, but I don't recommend it. I think a tiny bit is good. Now I'm going to stamp the same stamps in the same position with a colored ink to match my background. And this time when I stamp it, our stamping will be offset a bit. And look how cool that looks. You have the dark purple on top of the white, the dark purple that hit the dark purple cardstock because we offset, and then some of the white showing. Now I'll rotate my panel and then shift it up a little bit and repeat the process. I'll do the same thing on the pink card too. This time I'm using a magenta ink for my second layer. I'll shift it up, stamp it, and you can see the fun look that we get. You can do this on lighter cardstocks, but I find the impact is better when you use darker colors of cardstock. Now here's the green panel. I shifted it up and I'm stamping with emerald ink. I think this green ended up being my favorite. However, I let it touch a uh, wet washcloth and so it ruined it. So I'm gonna have to go back and try that again in the future. Okay, we're back to the guide to do more images. So I'm lining them up with the guide, close the door on the MISTI, and now we can continue to do the exact same process. I'll go through and stamp the images with white pigment ink on all of my panels, rotating it each time for the double stamping. And then I will go through and stamp on top of that with a colored dye ink slightly shifting my paper up first. Okay, so I did this for all three pan. well, actually I'm down to two panels here for the purple and the pink. And then I did two different card designs with the two. For the purple, I decided to do that partial cutting like I did on my first card, where I cut up to the stamping and then stop and then cut around the stamping. That way I can have some of my images hang off the edge. Okay, after I cut around this, it's time to create what looks like a silver mat along these cut edges. Now I only had a small piece of silver cardstock. So what I did is I cut some strips from it. And then I'm going to glue this right along the edge so it peeks out. This makes it look like I matted that whole purple piece with silver cardstock, but really I only used two small pieces. 
this is a good way to use up scraps, but also to kind of um, preserve that piece in the middle so you don't waste as much when you're crafting. Before I put this on my note card, I wanted to add some detail to that white. So I have a white note card that I'm going to open up and I'll tape on the Altenew Dotted Starburst Debossing Die. This is one of my favorites. I run this through my die cut machine like a regular die and it creates this piercing pattern. So I white heat embossed a sentiment in the center of our purple panel and added it to the white note card. Here you can see that detail piercing on the white note card and also the fun look that you get by overlapping stamping with a little bit of an offset. So we did the white pigment ink with the purple ink on top. You can see how this is a fun way to change up the look of a stamp set that you have that doesn't have layering included. Now here's the pink panel. On this one, by the way, I did a bright pink background, but I used a magenta, almost a purplish pink ink. And so you get a little bit of a different look. I added in the center the Altenew handwritten hello die cut. I die cut three and glued them together for dimension. And also added a sentiment that says, you make a difference, and it's from that same line art stamp set. Okay, my next example shows some more ways to do layering with your different inks. This time I did white pigment ink, then I did a dye ink and a gold pigment ink. This stamp set is really fun and can be used in so many different ways. You can create wreaths with it, you can create backgrounds, you could do solid stamping or layered. Notice there are solid images and then kind of a sketchy layer you can add to it. Now let me show you uh, the little brochure in this one because it shows a bunch of different ways to use it and the many different looks that you can get. So I thought I'd do a crazy layered background using the images in this and the basic inks that we've been talking about. To save time, I've taken several of the more solid images from the set and I've arranged them in my Misty stamping tool and I'm stamping them all at once with the white pigment ink. I then will clean off the stamps and then put them in a new position and continue to stamp with white pigment ink until our entire background is covered. You could see how easy it is to use smaller images like this to maybe create a frame around a card or just a border or a wreath, but I decided to go for the background. Once I was done, I'm taking the second layer or the sketchy layer of these images and lining them up with the solid stamping that we've done. Now I'm not taking great care to make it lined up perfect. To have them slightly offset a bit is actually fun for this technique. So if you're one of those who doesn't like to line things up perfectly, this is a great technique for you. Once I have a few lined up, I'll go ahead and stamp this time with a dark green dye ink. And when I stamp, you'll see how we get some dark stamping when the dark ink hits the dark cardstock. But then we get some lighter green stamping when the dark green inks uh, hits the white pigment ink. So you get this fun offset look similar to what we had before, but this is with a layering set. And I'll continue to do that green stamping on top of the white to cover the panel. Once I'm done, I decided to stamp some dots on top of this. So we have that same dot background from before. And this is that enchanted gold pigment ink that I told you about. It doesn't stamp like a solid gold. It does like a shimmer gold that's really cool and great for layering. So I just stamped that once lightly on the background. And so now we have gold dots on top of that, which makes this look almost like a patterned paper with shimmer. And you can see how the shimmer is picked up when you tilt it in the light. For the sentiment, I'm using the Altenew handwritten hello die set. This die set has a thin hello and then a thicker hello. You can use them separately or layer them together. I decided to cut both from white cardstock and glue them together for a little bit of a different layered look. I also stamped a sentiment strip that I glued right along the bottom of our layered background. So you can see it says, I appreciate everything you do. Once again, I wanted to add some detail to our white note card. You can see the piercing there. This time I used the Altenew Dotted Swirls Debossing Die, which was a favorite of mine from last year. Again, it just creates the piercing. So I did that on the front of our white note card and then I glued our green panel down but I did it kind of wonky so it's a little bit of an angle up there and then I added some gold gemstones. I really like how the layering on that green piece adds a lot of interest to this very simple card. So you have the white pigment ink, the green dye ink, and then the gold shimmer ink dots on top of that. 
So this shows that you can try layering other inks also, including your metallic pigment inks. By the way, that sentiment comes from probably my most used stamp set of all time, the Alta New Needlework Motif. I really like the messages in this, and it seems to work with just about any card. Okay, we're on our last example. This time I do some stamping on dark cardstock and add perfect pearls once again. Now this Alta New stamp set can be used in many ways. You can do the outline alone, the layering images inside the outline, or the layering by itself. And I decided to go with the layering by itself. I also really like the different sentiments included. So I'll start with using Versamark ink first. So I have Versamark ink on some dark plum cardstock, which gives you a dark watermark look. I'm actually stamping four of these so I can create extra cards later on. It's quick to do when you have a stamping tool. Now I'm going to apply some Perfect Pearl to this, just like I did earlier, except this is an iris color, a purple color of Perfect Pearl, but you could use the basic white. Now I'm just gonna tap this on there and look at that iridescent look that you get right away. By the way, whenever I finish stamping and using Perfect Pearls, I just spray it with a fixative just to be sure that it doesn't rub off, and I'll link to the fixative that I use below. Okay, now it's time for our second layer. Actually, this isn't a layer, but second piece of this stamping puzzle. This time I'm using Cosmic Berry, which is just a darker color to match the cardstock that I'm using. Then for the next image, I'm going to use white pigment ink. What I'm showing here is that if you have a stamp set like this that you think requires lots of colors of ink and you are concerned that you don't have all the colors, try using some of your other basic colors like your pigment inks or your perfect pearls or your embossing. Get creative with the other supplies that you have. After I did the stamping and die cut out all the images, I used the Altenew nesting label die set to die cut a white label that I put my image on. I also stamped blessings from the same stamp set and then added that to a purple note card where I used that starburst debossing cover die. I also added some silver gemstones to the image, and you can see how using different inks together creates some fun stamping on a dark colored cardstock. So there you have a, <laughs> a bunch of examples showing different ways you can use your inks and different types of stamps together on dark colored cardstocks for different looks. So I encourage you to give this a try. We're all home. We all have to find ways to kind of escape the madness that's going on and crafting is the perfect solution. So grab some of the inks that you have, the dark cardstocks, the stamps, and go to town. I hope that you will also consider giving those to people right now who could use a little bit of encouragement. If you are interested in the different supplies that I use today, you can check that out in my description below. And also here in the middle, I have a couple other related videos that you might like, and it'll give you something to watch while we stay home. Thanks for spending this time with me. Please stay healthy, please stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.